Yo, 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 what's up, Thrill Seekers? Right here is the Adam RC Seal. I bought mine as a kit, and I don't think that it came with instructions. You're going to have to glue on your tail, and I believe uh, the vertical stabilizer also had to be glued on. So, I used hot glue to glue mine on, but... Um, you can use CA glue or foam glue or any of that. Mine has been laminated. I laminated mine. So I've also spray painted it. But put your servos into uh, your tail. And then I used a coat hanger. It's, I reached in from the fuselage area. Uh, we'll get this door. So I reached in. From the fuselage area, there's, you can see, well, barely see. Can we get in there? No, we can't get in there. But there's, this tube goes all the way back. And I used a clothes hanger. Uh, actually, I, I had, before I even glued this part on, I used a clothes hanger from this area to go through this area. There's a carbon spar that also runs through here. And, uh... I stuck the clothes hanger through the carbon spar and I pulled, um, I taped my connector leads for these two servos in and I pulled it through. I pulled the uh, hanger through to get my connector leads through here. And then I reached my hand into the door and pulled the cables the rest of the way through. I think I may have used an extension extension on these or I think it came with extra long uh, connections I built this a year ago so I don't remember what exactly came in the kit but I vaguely remember putting this together so I'm trying to go off of memory of how I put this together but you're going to want to put your servos in and obviously we'll get to the connecting rods but you're going to want to put your servo leads through this tail and I think either I went through the carbon spar or under the carbon spar. I'm pretty sure I went through the carbon spar, but uh, I'm not going to take this all apart to <laughs> find out. So put your two servos in. You can uh, don't glue them in yet. Just get them through there. And uh, because you're going to want to use your servo tester to get your uh control arms you see i have my control arm facing forward well let me see Ooh, well i'm glad we we brought this up so you can see my elevator is starting to fracture a little bit not all the way but a little bit so we may be using some uh laminate to reinforce my elevator i don't think it's necessary just yet but keep an eye on that. But let me see. Let me set. So, so here's the elevator. So yeah, my elevator arm, I have it going slightly forward. And that's my neutral position. For my rudder, it is in the neutral position for it being level. So, you're going to want to get this taken care of. I think that's how I did it. I think I started with the tail area first, and I put that together, pulled the connector, connectors through using a hanger, because the tube is not, obviously, you can't, it's such a long tube that trying to feed them in one by one, you just ain't going to do it. Get you a hanger or a rod or something, stick it through here, tape your connectors onto that rod or, or hanger and slowly pull it through. That part is done. You'll easily be able to get your connectors through this little short area here. So that this part's not a worry. After that, you're gonna wanna glue your tail on, glue your vertical stabilizer on, and glue this piece on, because all of these come separate. You got that part taken care of. Um, the next thing you want to do is, uh, I don't know, I didn't buy a PMP, so I don't know if your motor's installed or not, but you're gonna wanna uh, use your 
balsa wood motor mount, your motor will bolt in. The four bolts will go from the other side of this motor mount into your motor. And then you will use your four screws. There's a balsa wood piece that's already glued into the foam. And then you're going to screw into that foam piece. That's pretty much that simple for doing the motor. Obviously, I used the folder prop and I used my own because I bought the kit version. So this is a Sunny Sky 2216 uh 1400 kv and we're spinning a nine by six i would like to use a 10 but i think a 10 would be too much i mean you have just a little bit of a gap there with the nine inch so i'm running a nine inch because i'm running 3s a 3s 5200 pack plus a little bit of two uh 14 gram weights and a 3S5200 gets me the CG. That's without any FPV equipment. Once you add FPV equipment, you might be able to get your CG a little bit better. Um, you're going to have these two pieces, my two green pieces. These are optional. You can make your wings short or you can make them long. And to me, I got this as a long range plane so I want my wingspan to be as long as possible so you're going to put your inserts in first and then you're going to put your wings on after that flip this upside down and you will see I used all plastic gear servos for this build because I had a bunch of plastic gear servos and I figured this is a glider it's not going to be it's not going to take the abuse of like a jet or a plane. So plastic gear servos will be fine for this, in my opinion. But I used a Y um, connector. I don't remember if it came with a Y connector or if I supplied my own. But I had a Y connector. I cut into the foam and put my connector into the foam and I glued it in there. So when you get these two pieces on, I think you got one car, you got two carbon spars. You got a, a skinny carbon spar and you got a thick one. There was a wood piece that goes in here, a balsa wood piece for each of these that you can use if you're planning on detaching the wings, but I don't plan on detaching the wings and I didn't feel like messing around with gluing. You have to, you had to glue in that balsa wood piece first i didn't i didn't feel like dealing with that so you're securing with this bolt here that carbon spar is secured with this little bolt there's a a thing securing that but i'm pretty sure i glued these on if you i would glue these on unless you like portability then you don't have to glue them on i like gluing them on because that way when i'm in the air i'm not worried about my wings coming loose if i do uh, stunts, loops, torque roll, or yeah, rolls, loops, and all that stuff. So I, my stuff is glued on here. Got my Celtics uh, stuff on here. Centered out uh, servo. Now both of these will be ser centered out. The elevator, I don't know why I did the elevator that weird. I think it was binding up going down too far if, when I had it in the center, so I moved it. It's better to have too much up than too much down <laughs> on elevator. So there's that. There's the wings. Let me back out some so you can see. And uh, obviously, you've already taken care of the tail, but here's the bottom half of the tail. I glued on that skid, and I glued on this skid, and then I also put laminate over that skid as well so it would you know what i think would be nice is if you had a wheel like the ranger setup it has that two wheels on the front and one wheel in the back i think that would be sick for this but obviously if you're landing in the grass i've landed this on the pavement a few times it's just so i could do touch and goes but this is perfectly fine to land in the grass i put one of my RX antennas out. There's a hole that's already there. I put 
one of my RX antennas out through that hole. Let's uh, get this open. And here's our battery area. And let's go into the, yeah, it's not the best setup. Everything's just kind of thrown in there, but hey, <laughs> here's my receiver, FlySky IA6. I have a separate BEC that I have set to 5.6 volts. It's adjustable. I have a BIME A gyro that I will use if it's too windy or things get crazy. I will turn on this BIME A gyro. Having that BIME A gyro for me is an easy way to get your trims and everything dialed in without crashing your plane. So there is a BIME A gyro. There's a receiver running S bus, but you could run it PWM where you're connected directly to the servo and your elevator and rudder um, connectors are coming through that opening there. Um, and then up in here, my e -A -S -E -S -C wires and I have a 35 amp BL Heli ESC in here and it is uh, stuck in between that area i know it's supposed to be right here and there's a wood piece that covers it but um i didn't think that it was necessary so my esc is right there where these three wires are connected to it's a really skinny one i don't know what the pnp one comes with because i bought um my dolphin as a kit version because i like using my own stuff man i i do i i Nothing against plug and play kits, but I like to use what I feel is tried and true. And I know you can't go wrong with the Sunday Sky motor. And uh, I like using the BL Heli ESC, which is basically a drone ESC, but it doesn't have a BEC. So if you do use a BL Heli, in my opinion, they're the most efficient over over airplane ESCs. That's I use BL Heli ESCs, and almost most most of my planes are using. A BL Heli drone ESC and then I'll put my own BEC in here and I like this one because it has a voltage readout so um, I can oh, pop this door open after a landing and before I don't I don't even need to hop um, hook a battery checker up I can just pull this door off and it will tell me how many volts I have right now on the battery so I like that I got that at Amazon, on Amazon. Just search um, adjustable BEC on Amazon and you'll see these pop up. Can I get a light on in here? There we go. Sorry, guys. I should have put that on before. So that's the adjustable BEC I have. I have small ones and large ones, but I do like this one. You can screw your wires into it. You don't have to solder because sometimes if you solder... Um, and you, depending on what plane you have it in, all the moving around the solder can break and whatnot. But these are secured by screws, so that's cool. And there's your little LED readout. It also has capacitors on there. So if you're pulling too many amps on your motor, which this setup is not going to pull too many amps because I'm only running 3S. But sometimes if you pull too many amps on an airplane ESC, it will reset the ESC. And when it resets the ESC, it also resets your gyro, everything else. So not good. So, but that's neither here or there. You can use the cone um, cover, or you can use this, which is an FPV cover. I cut this square out so I can get my camera through there. And then I'm going to have a servo on this wood piece so I can have a pan servo or a pan or I can do, you know, a pan tilt. I usually like just using a pan servo because of the simplicity of it. And I can run it to my one of my uh, ports on that uh, receiver and I can set it up on a switch. I like setting them up on a switch. It, yeah, you you don't have the full adjustability. But it's simple to hit a switch and have it on a three-second delay 
where it will slowly pan off to one side or slowly pan off to the other side. That's what I like doing for simplicity. I mean, you can get a head tracker and have real time, you know, movements and all that. But right now I just keep mine simple because I have I'm working on so many planes at once that I don't really have the time to put into each plane. So hopefully I did you some justice with this video. Um, if you could hit the subscribe and like button. Thank you.